All right, guys, right here I have my C10 um, SEX24. Um, done a couple of little things to it, some different wheels and tires, and a little magnet mount up here on the front. Um, but today, I haven't seen a single person showing a video how they did their surpass motor install so i'm gonna try to make a video so you guys can see how i'm doing it hopefully i'm successful um first off going through the parts that i needed i had to slowly kind of get these um surpass motor off of uh, amazon and then this is the surpass motor mount from shapeways um you can order those and either set of one or two and then you'll need some um deeper bolts um, I went to the local hobby shop and he found some for me that were the right size um, to mount through here. Um, and then the part that I wasn't sure about was how to get the gearing right um, to work with the kind of the stock transmission transfer case area. And um, a guy on Facebook helped me out and uh, told me which ones to order. Um, so here's one I ordered off eBay. 0.5 M spur gear conversion and then I got the uh, 12 tooth 48 P hardened steel pinion gear with a 1 8 bore so this one fits onto the end of uh, the surpass motor but that is way too um, big of cogs to work with the st uh, standard one so you convert it over using this piece and here goes nothing All right, so what you can see I've done so far is I removed the uh, the battery tray, get it out of my way. Um, I started, I gotta figure out how to relocate this because I believe I'm switching from what it looks like from I've seen other people that have it completed, I'm switching the battery, or sorry, the motor. Um, it's gonna be forward instead of this way. The stock motor sits in kind of like this with the new mount and everything. I, I believe it's gonna be this way. I'll see if I'm right. Um, but then I, what I did is I took apart the, uh, the motor mounting plate, removed that from here, uh, removed the, uh, this gear, which we're going to swap for this one, um, and got it all prepped and ready. So I'm going to mess with it and see if I can figure out how it all goes back together. So I think I got this set up about right. I put that uh, that gear on the inside um, right here and um, got the motor mounted here. Problem I'm having is it seems like it's binding up when I tighten it. So if I loosen it up quite a bit, I can, I'm getting the motor to spin and everything. But now, if I hit that, gear it's kind of funky so I'm gonna keep messing with this till I can feel like I get it in the right spot all right what it is I swapped it I had it in this spot here and then one in this spot um, ideally I'd have three, but I only have two of these, so I did them opposite, and then I was able to adjust this just right to where now they can spin and it's not binding up. So I got that tension right, because this allows you to spin it this way and this way. So now i got to figure out how this needs to go inside here. Um, but the problem is, is the radio is in the way, so i got to figure out about, um, not the radio, sorry, the uh, receiver. Um, I gotta figure out how to relocate this. And I also forgot to mention, um, since I'm going brushless, uh, I saw all the videos about 
Fury Tech uh, um, ESCs. And I ordered this one. I actually thought I was ordering the Tegu, which is the new one, but I guess this is actually the Lizard, um, and it has the Bluetooth. And I actually, because of some recommendations, I ran the stock motor with this one, but I was going through stock motors really fast in mine and my kid's uh, deadbolt. And so um, that's why it prompted me to have try out this whole Surpass system. But you have to switch the ESC in order to run the brushless. So this is going to get plugged in too. And really this uh, receiver is just only going to be used for the receiving. We're going to bypass everything else. So actually this little receiver figured out you don't want to do the bolts here. It's just double-sided sticky tape. And so I'll just pry something underneath it. And you can uh, get that off of there to relocate it. All right, with the motor mounted right here, I can't fit this piece that I want to keep my uh, magnet mounts for the body, and that's where the front shocks are supposed to mount to. So I'm going to try to trim this out and see if it'll fit in after that. All right, I got this trimmed up. You can see how uh, the motor just barely fits in there. Now the tricky part is, is I don't know where I'm going to mount this receiver. Um, I think I might be able to kind of. Uh, fitted in front of here but as you can see the motor still is able to spin and I got everything where I can plug it in and it barely tucks in underneath these um, body mounts I made so I think it's gonna work like this but we'll have to see how we like it running that direction all right here it goes with our first little run I have it all hooked up to my phone on the app, I have set up the brushless and everything, and uh, it works. And man, it can really slow down. I'm gonna have to test it out a little bit. All right, I got the battery tray back in, battery mounted, kind of got the Freetech ESC kind of Velcroed there as well, so it's not touching the motor. And then I just have this kind of temporarily mounted here. I'm gonna run it like that for a while and see how it works. But got everything plugged in, um, you just press this little tiny button on the, uh, on the Furtec, and then, uh, we should be good to, uh, control everything, yep, we got power, and then this thing slow crawls, so slow. Everything tucks inside there. All right, here's some testing with it. Uh, it's pouring in our backyard, our little rock crawling area we have over there is too soaking wet, so I just dragged some rocks over here to try it out. I can do some one-handed driving. Things working pretty awesome. I'm excited. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and uh, hopefully it helps you out.